Hey everyone, it is time to talk about fear and uncertainty. I'm Tia. And I'm Kim. And today's episode of Mask Off, like I said, we're going to talk about fear and uncertainty. We're living in a time of complete uncertainty. <laughs> Probably the most uncertain time I feel I've experienced in my Same life. for me. And so our quote we're starting out with is from Gabrielle Bernstein. Fear is often our immediate response to uncertainty. There's nothing wrong with experiencing fear. The key is not to get stuck in it. Yeah, and, that's awesome. Yeah, and we, we were talking, you know, like we always do before we hit record. And I mean, it's the week before the election uh, that this episode will go live and we're in the whole throes of that uncertainty of what is going to happen where regardless of where you stand politically one person wins the other person wins we still don't know what it's going to look like and even when that announcement is going to happen and then what happens after we're living in this time we're in that what do they call it the six month slump of um i remember reading an article about that that you hit a six month slump and you don't know because you can't go back to what life used to be. So we're six months into this pandemic about give or take several weeks. And we don't know what it's going to look like. Mm. We don't know coming into fall. We have these shorter days, longer nights. It's getting cooler, you know, depending on where you are in the world. But for the U.S., we're moving into fall and winter and the leaves are dropping on the trees. It's just this incredible time of change. And we don't know what it's gonna look like. I know that is so interesting that you actually have said that because that has so come up for me this past week. Mm. So I have had my ebb and flows with coronavirus when it first came out or when we first were in lockdown back in maybe March and April, I yeah. definitely had a ton of fear. I, I think I shared back then oh, yeah. in the episodes <laughs> where I even was like, because at the time my son was not being careful and, mm -hmm. you know, I went into panic mode and I reacted so hugely like, okay, you need to stay up in your room. You need to isolate. You need, to, right. I mean, I just was like right. crazy about it. Super fearful of getting coronavirus. And then I got myself into the space of, okay, I'm going to live in the moment. I'm just going to, you know, be okay with that. I'm going to be careful. The only thing I can control is myself. I can't right. control people, places, and things. Exactly. So I was mindful of making sure that I washed my hands. I wiped down the groceries. I kept my mask on. Yes, I was around him, but I also in my mind got myself to a place of if I got coronavirus mm -hmm. and if I ended up in the hospital and if I ended up on the ventilator, which is right. this thing I do with myself. I always take myself to the what ifs, right? The what if thing? Oh my yep. gosh, there it is. The yep. what if thing. Exactly. <laughs> and I go all the way down that, that train. And then I'm like, okay, can I be okay in that? Right. right? It's an exercise that I do and it's really useful. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I know that I have the coping skills and the strength to deal with whatever happens and I'll right. deal with it if, and when it happens, but right, right now I don't have to. So I got myself in this really good space with coronavirus mm -hmm. for many months. And then this past week, I'm like, <laughs> it, went, it went again, right? I read an article and now listen, this is so interesting how we always talk about how a thought can trigger something yes. or an event can trigger the exactly the thought train, the thought train. Yep. And it can keep me going down the rabbit hole. So last week I read an article in the Washington post where now they're saying even more studies are coming out that are backing up the fact that it can be an airborne illness. Right. Right. Well, That's air, more airborne. They, they said it in the beginning, but they were like, uh, not so sure. But now they're saying there's more reason hundred percent it's airborne. Yep. Yeah. I think they even included it now on the CDC website and the CDC. Yeah, exactly. And that's what yep. the article said. So now I'm like, okay, so all summer long, I've been going to restaurants and eating outside, but even in like the last month I've gone inside to some restaurants. Wow. I've been going inside with my mask off, right? Yeah, yeah. But this is before I read the, the article. 
<laughs> now you're like, <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah. So now I went to what to a coffee shop yesterday. And the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself, where's the coronavirus? Where's the coronavirus? <laughs> it's floating in the air. It's up there. It's up there. <laughs> so I'm yeah. back into that fear mm -hmm. and that uncertainty again as well. So I have to right. reel myself in and I have to find the balance for myself in terms of what, where am I going to still live my life? Right. And how much am I going to be in fear? Because I don't know the idea of maybe the next six months for winter, at least, mm -hmm. because where I live in New York, winter can go right into and all the way through April, right? Sometimes Same how old here. it can be. Wisconsin, most definitely. <laughs> yes, for sure. So we're talking maybe May before I can sit outside again to mm -hmm. go out to eat. So I don't see myself staying inside the house every single weekend or all the time for the next six months like that. So I have all these thoughts going on, sure. all this fear, all this uncertainty of what if, and you know, so it's, yeah. What about you? Yeah. I mean, it's, Ooh. and I think it's, for me, it's the whole outdoor indoor thing. Cause I haven't mm -hmm. been inside, you know, unless I'm grocery shopping or something. Yeah. So I haven't done what you've done. Um, and it's not because of fear, like controlling fear. It's not mm. like, it's not a base of, I'm so afraid and paranoid. It's for me, it's, I can control myself. I choose not to hang out indoors with people. That's just, yeah. that's just my decision. Um, and, but it's not, you know, people don't live in fear. So there's, I get frustrated with that. Don't live in fear in when it's in a judgment way, like you're letting, you know, don't wear a mask because you're living in fear whatever, yeah. that, you know, like it's a controlling thing of another don't live in fear versus I am choosing not to live in fear because I'm making conscious choices of what works for me. So for right. me, I don't really want to eat in a restaurant. That's just me. Yeah. And also, you know, Wisconsin is through the roof right now. Yes. I know you guys are, I just read that. The news. <laughs> you are, you know, so you're the new hotspot, right? So at the beginning of this, you were in the hotspot. Yes. You know, and I look back now with all the fear we had back then with all that uncertainty and unknowing, and I joke about it with my kids. I'm like, that's the safest we were <laughs> mm. truly because there was very little here um, and we were super hunkered down, right? Basically everything shut down, restaurants, nothing was open. No one knew what was going on, you know, because right. we didn't, we didn't know what was going on. And we still don't fully know based I on know. what they just released. Um, where now I'm at a place of, I'm, I'm in, I'm comfortable with that unknowing, you know, of course the fear rises up, but then I come back to, okay, what's going on right now? Okay. What choice can I make? I can choose yeah. to do this or choose not to do that. Um, but it's going into those winter months. And that's my uncertainty right now, because I, I walk um, a few times a week, at least with a couple neighbors in the, in where I live, you know, we live in the country. So we're walking on the country roads. And one of them said, are we going to still keep walking when it's cold? Cause I want to keep walking. And so it's like, you know, just cause it's cold doesn't mean I still can't find ways to be outside and connect. And so it's may look different. It may not be what it is now. And so rather than thinking of these shorter days and all of that, it's like, okay, so we, maybe we walk at night with lights, you know, cause we do walk on roads that are speeding cars. So you yes. have to be smart and about it too. But so what does it look like? We don't know. Mm. We don't know what it's going to look like after the election. We don't know what winter is going to look like. Is it going to be through the roof or are, is it going to actually stabilize because people aren't going out as much? We don't, we don't know. Yeah. Another like, big, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, finish. just basically, I was going to say what you said. It's like, we only can control ourselves. And if you yeah. get it, then you have the tools we have our little backpack that we're carrying, right? Yes. You yes. know, we're wrapping up our balancing your backpack. And so the ba balancing your backpack is balancing your body, mind, and spirit, your foundation. But what you're carrying in your backpack are the tools that we 
have to navigate through life with flow and presence and less, you know, take that anxiety and the fear out of our backpack. So what you were, so it comes back to what you were saying. If this happens, I go down the thought train in a mindful way, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I know I can bring in this tool of presence, this tool of flow, this tool of acceptance of the as is so I can make a conscious choice moving forward. And I think I'm glad you brought up again about taking out of the backpack. So for me, that might look like, okay, I don't watch the news quite as much, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So I happened to watch the debate last night and another, well, we said even just the election can bring up a lot of fear and uncertainty for a lot of us. And the other part of the coronavirus is the vaccine, right? So Senator Harris was saying like, you know, okay, yes, if Fauci says to take the vaccine, I'll take it. But mm-hmm. if Trump says it, I won't. But a lot of people in general, I mean, when I talk with other friends and other people, and we talk about the vaccine, a lot of people are afraid to take it because they just don't know how safe it'll be in terms right. of how fast they're doing it. Right. So exactly. there's so much of this. And again, it's not like the other, you don't want to go to the other end of the extreme, bury your head in the sand, which exactly. I can certainly do that. I can pendulum <laughs> swing all the way over to... Mm-hmm you know, let me just pretend none of this exists. Right. And that has some benefits, you know, when I'm just doing my life and my, my little world, it does block it all out. Right. And then yet you have to have some consciousness as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that for me, what really triggered it and especially, you know what, here's another thing with our younger people, I say younger people, but it's a lot of people, (laughs) but oh my God. Okay. Here's another, oh my God. There's so many of these freaking fears. Right. I just also watched this um, social dilemma. Oh, so good. And then right. you have to watch the great, have you watched the great hack? I have not. I've, I'm already piggyback on each other. Okay. Bit. So I'm, kind of... I'm already heightened in right. my fear and uncertainty from the fact that, you know, Facebook is watching everything mm-hmm. I do. YouTube, like everything. I, oh my gosh. Can I just tell you? So I guess that's a really good point that we should talk about then yeah. is we are talking about balance with our balance or backpack. Where's the balance in how much do you expose yourself to outside information, which all of that stuff is what set me over the edge, watching the social dilemma, watching the debate, reading the article about coronavirus, all this information. So what I was going to say about our younger people, how much information they have coming in their minds, Mm -hmm that can create the fear base. I mean, just some of the stuff my daughter watches on Twitter, she'll send me something. Oh my God, did you see this? And she's like, you know, Mm -hmm. fearful after seeing something. Right. Versus, okay, on the other end, you just block all that out. Where's, but you're not in the know. You have to be, because knowledge is power. You do need to be somewhat informed. Mm -hmm. So I think it is, again, wow, I love this. Everything is coming back to balance, 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 right? Right. right. And it, it's knowing too now, especially, I mean, we knew it before, but the social dilemma really pinpoints oh, some stuff. Oh yeah. Maybe you we know, should just tell a little bit to the people listening about the social dilemma. Yeah. It's a documentary it. on Netflix. It just talks about how we don't really choose what information is coming into us I know. most of the time, which is why we get, we need to make sure that we take the time to choose what we take in versus just take in what the algorithms are telling us we should take in to further our beliefs, create more fear, whatever it may be, you know, buy that product. Um, And so that's why I think what you just said is so important. It's like, we can swing on that pendulum. Like sometimes we do just need, I just need a break. I just need to not take anything in. And then there's other times I take in too much and I'm taking in stuff that I'm not mindfully choosing to take in. I'm taking in what other people tell me to take in because it shows up on a Facebook feed or an email or whatever. Um, so it's noticing. I think it's that aware. It's again, like increasing mm-hmm. our awareness, increasing our choices coming from an internal place versus that external stimulus that's telling us what to think, what to believe, how to move throughout the world versus I'm choosing to read X article. I'm choosing to tap into my body, mind, and spirit and trust, oh, 
Does that align with me? Right. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't mean we ignore science. I am a science person. Don't, I want the science that's, I'm, you know, I've always had that. So I'm not saying ignore stuff because it doesn't match with your belief system, but then challenge your belief system too Mm. as well. Because there's things I used to believe and now I don't necessarily believe them anymore. I can't think of something off the top of my head. Um, I've, yeah, if something comes, I can share it. But I question, I, it's questioning, being curious. Hey, it's um, uh, Katie Byron, By- Byron Katie. <laughs> uh, is it, <laughs> is true? it true? Yeah, is it true? Because so yeah. many times we think something's true, but who tells us it's true? Right. Is it true? So that traces back to our fears, you know, because we started this off talking about fear and uncertainty. Yes. And recognizing it's okay to be fearful. I know. Oh, you know what? This is um, Tara Brock says, I'm writing this down. Tara Brock says it too. And I think it is also with what you just said, real, but not true, which Mm -hmm. means that it can seem real. It can feel real, but is it really true? And oftentimes it's not. And a lot of times that goes with what we tell ourselves, right? The belief systems, it feels so incredibly real, Mm -hmm. but is it true? Right. I mean, that's when we're feeling anxious. Yes. Our mind is not always telling us the truth. And that goes into Joe Dispenza's stuff because oftentimes what we're telling ourselves is something from the past is a A memory from the past, a story. Right. Mm-hmm. So is the, the story might feel real, but is the story true? And the story mm-hmm. might be, you know, oh my gosh, I can't hand. So for me, the yeah. storyline would have been, <laughs> I can't handle if I get coronavirus mm-hmm. and I end up in the hospital and I end up like on the vent, I'm not gonna be able to handle all that because right. what was my storyline? If you remember from all yep. the episodes from when I was five and I was choking on the pine needle and all the adults around me were panicking and I freaking out. And it was my first experience with something like that. Mm -hmm. And then that just stayed a story throughout my life of when people are sick or hurt, I can't handle it Mm -hmm. to the point when my kids were babies and they, something happened. I said to my husband here, you, you (laughs) You take me. I remember one time. Oh, I remember one time when Angela was, um, eight months old and she had a really um, bad upper respiratory infection. And I had her sleeping in her car seat. I was sleeping on the left seat and I had her in her car seat. So she was more upright. So she wouldn't choke, but she still, and it was the middle of the night, like midnight. And she still at this one point was kind of like choking on, on the mucus and Mm -hmm. the phlegm. And I started, (laughs) I said, I went and got my husband here. You you, (laughs) help her help. It was hysterical. Not, yeah. not funny, but right, right, right. So you can story, look at it now and yes. see how your belief systems completely took over. Right. That situation. And right. If it happened now, you'd have a very different response. Right. So the because pen, the right. fact it the other way, exactly. So mm-hmm. the fact that I was at that point, I thought I wasn't capable of handling it was a story that I told myself, but is that story true? It's not true. It's only because I kept telling myself. So in the next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about, okay, if you're in this place, in this muck, this murky water of uncertainty Mm -hmm. and fear, and you're feeling anxious, you know, what, what can you do to pull yourself out of the murky water and get back on climbing your mountain? Right. Because we can talk about, you just do it like simply, but how? So we'll dive into that. Yeah. So we're super excited you are here with us today. Thank you everybody for always supporting us. And again, um, we would love it if you would like, subscribe, even share, comment, and make sure you tune in for the next one to hear the antidote. That's right. All right. Have a great day. Bye.